Yesterday, we go up to here. Do not worry what the heck is the stuff inside. Because now we are talking about logic. So if you don't know what the heck is this three bullet point and this five small bullet point, it doesn't matter. The things that is important is what? How do you make use of this PQ thing? So why I'm talking about 1.3.33? This is an example of 1.1.3 from 34. Is how do you prove two things are the same? The thing involves what? Mathematics, calculus, linear algebra, set theory, any math you learn in your whole life. So how do you prove two things are the same? You prove two things are the same by showing all the possible case from the left will give you the thing on the right, and you also show all the possible thing on the right give you the thing on the left. So for example, how do you prove this is true? What is this? This is contrapositive. Okay, we talked about it yesterday, and they are the same. Why? Because they have the same logic value. Practice. Solve this equal to this by proof of exhaustion. That means you try all the zero and one. So this will work. And then now you can do the same thing here and here. This is just an exercise. Please uh, try in your spare time. This free exercise is to show that if we want to prove two logic statements are the same, I have to do the truth table with so many zero and one. Oh my gosh, what about this? First of all, you can always do the same thing that is proved by exhaustion. That means proof force. You use all the zero and one to prove these are true. You can always do that. But come on, these are so complicated, so many variables. So people organize these into a set of most, most, most fundamental rule. Double negation is not fundamental. Here's the explanation. Suppose I have a statement P, proposition P, I consider not P, and then after that, another not. Okay, so not, not P. The law of double negation, not, not P is P. Okay, you may take this as granted. Actually, it's not. It's not granted. It can be proven by something else. So, for example, not, not P is a statement. I see this whole thing as X. Then X is the same as X and 2, right? This is what? This is called identity law. I'm just copying from this table. Okay. Then what? What is 1? P or not P is 1. Okay. This is not by any law. This is just by the definition of or operation. Okay. So anything or the negation of anything is 1, right? Because either this is true, this is false, or this is false, this is true, right? So 1 is the same as P or not P. And then now what? Well, I just swap their order. Swapping order is called commutative. This sounds very stupid, right? It's just swapping order. No, this is not stupid. Two matrix A times B is not the same as B times A. So do not think that AB is the BA. In general, AB is not BA. It just happened. All the math you learn in high school, AB is BA. In general, AB is not BA. Okay, when AB is BA, we call it commutative. And then, in this case, it is. Then, what's next? Now, I have a big chunk of thing in this line. What the heck is this? I'm going to do distribution also. What is that? This thing, as my yellow thing, correspond to this yellow thing. So this is my yellow thing. This is my yellow thing. So that means, in the next line, I need to have two yellow thing, which is here and here. In this expression, this Q is this not P. This or R is this or P. So Q is here, or R, the R is here, the or become here. So I'm just using distribution law to move from this line to this line. And then now what is this? This not P here, I just call it another guy, let's say A. Then this is what? This thing is not A and A. Not A and A, the logic value is always zero. So I write here, zero. And then I have a zero or this big bracket. So I have this big bracket. Now what? Okay, let's not talk about the detail. Then now I have this big chunk of thing. So what I'm what I have illustrated for you, this line to this line, 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 is basically I just recalling this table many, many times. Right? Okay, because the time I'm not going to tell you the other step. In the in the end you get P. So what does it mean? Not not P equal to P can be proven by identity, definition of all, commutative law, distribution law, and that's it. That means what? That means double negative. It's not the most basic one, it's not an atom. It is a molecule. Then naturally, you will have a question. What are the most, 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 most basic law? This is the figure telling you the most, 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 most basic law. So these are all a bunch of formula, even more than this table. And then what is this? This is called a graph. So you consider each of these as a point or a dot or a node. And if they have some relation, you draw a line. Now this crazy line are the relationship. And here's the thing. If you can prove something from the other guy, then you draw a line. And Eventually, if you try all this, if you try to do all this, try to see, oh, can I prove this by this, or can I prove this by that, you get this figure. And eventually, you found that all the things in highlighted in red cannot be proven by the other guy. So that means these are the atoms. So this is how you find what are the most basic thing, let's say in logic or mathematics, that cannot be derived by other guy. Then we call this thing axiom. See my point? Because why we call this thing axiom? 
Remember, very beginning, we said action is something we assume is true. Don't argue with me. The reason why we have to assume those are true because if I assume this box is, is wrong, all the things connecting to this box are immediately wrong. So, in other words, why these are true? Why we call this axiom? It's just because they are the root. We found that they are the root. And then because we want the system to be useful, so we let them one. Here's another example. You have something called not n. What's not n? It just have an n, put a not. And then now I don't want to write so many symbols. I'm lazy. I just write this stuff arrow with uh, on top. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. And here's a funny thing. Previously, I said that you can prove that this is equal to this, this is equal to this by exhaustion. You can also do the same thing. Not P is the same as P and P. And P and Q is the same as not P and Q. Then here's the funny thing. As I said, not can be used as NAND. So this thing will be what? If I don't only use NAND, it will be this whole bracket NAND itself. That means like logic. This axiom, some of them are more important than the other because they can prove the other people. Same for and or not. Okay, it turns out if you know what is NAND and if you define NAND like this, that means I define. I just define if P is one, Q is one, I just give a zero. Then with this funny logic formula, then I can write any and or not using NAND. Any logic statement is just some and or not, right? So that means any logic statement is just a bunch of NAND. This is in fact true. Any logic statement is just a bunch of NAND. So this is a theorem, okay? How do we prove this theorem? Very simple. You just draw the truth table like this to prove that not P is P and P. P and Q is this thing, and P nor Q is this thing, and P or Q is this thing. So basically now you have four truth tables, and you just prove they have the same zero one value. Then you prove this theorem. Proving theorem sometimes is not very difficult, it's just hard work, okay? And then now, here's another thing. What is a conjecture? Conjecture is a proposition. That means it has true value. But we don't know. But somebody claim it is true. For example, somebody claim P not equal to MP. And then here's a corollary. Assume we know P is true and we want to prove then Q is true. So basically what I'm doing, I want to prove P implies Q or if P then Q, then we can do this. So assume Q, Q is what we want to prove, right? It's not true. This is the same as I assume not Q, right? Then what? I assume not Q implies not P. This is proof by contradiction. Okay, suppose you forget. I have four things. I have this thing. If I want to prove P implies Q, I can prove the contrapositive. Proof not Q, then not P. Why? Because P implies Q and not Q, then not P have the same logic value. They are equivalent. Okay, of course P implies Q is not the same as Q implies P. They are different. Okay, but some of them are the same. Okay. So this is one way proved by a contrapositive, not contradiction. I made a mistake, okay. And then here's just some other thing. Let me tell you this one, we don't care. What is this normal form? There's a lot of term. These are just name. I'm not going to test you this. Okay, we are AI student, not CS student. If you're a CS student, you need to learn this. There are something called DNF and CNF. So what the heck is it? Is that you have a bunch of logic statement. You write everything of as or of n, or n of or. That means you write a bunch of bracket. The thing inside has to be one symbol, and the thing outside the bracket has to be another one. So that means what? For example, you don't want to see implies. You don't want to see this symbol. We know that x implies y is not x or y, right? Then we have removed the arrow. You see? So in the end, everything can reduce to just n or not. And then, as I said, n or not is just nan. That means in the end, everything is just a bunch of nan. Okay? And this thing boils down to the hardest problem in computer science called SAT. Again, this is not something in exam. I just let you know, okay? Is that I give you this thing. P or Q bracket, and not P or not Q. The question is, what are the true values such that this one give me true? Or what are the true values such that this one give me false? How do you solve it? So it's like I draw a truth table with some specific formula. This is formula. And then I want you to give me what are the true values here such that I see one here. This is the kind of problem. You should now understand this is a very difficult problem. Why? For example, I have this crazy formula. If I suddenly add a not, add a nan, add a or, and then add something else, the table will explode very quickly. So that means what? Using this root force, that means you fill in all the two force, two force, two force, or zero, one, zero, one, very quickly when you have a very long sentence, this table is so big that you cannot do it by hand. Then what? You would say, okay, then I call it by computer. Then there will be some sentence that is so big that computer also cannot solve it. So this is a hard problem. And now I'm going to give you an exercise that why study and or not? This is a useful example. Suppose John, you have a meeting. 
John can only meet Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Kathleen cannot meet Wednesday. Annie cannot meet Friday. Peter cannot meet neither Tuesday nor Thursday. Find a day they can meet. This, right? Can meet Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? So Monday or Wednesday or Thursday. And then Peter cannot Tuesday, cannot Thursday. So not Tuesday, not Thursday. And they all appear, right? So it's N, N, N. That means what? Find the true value of this expression such that the output is one. Then you solve this time booking problem. And now you understand, time booking is just a bunch of N or not. And now, this problem is so complicated, so somebody proved it many, many years ago, said that this is an MP complete problem, in other words, this is a hard problem. There are some problems easy, some problems is hard, how do we tell this problem is hard, this problem is easy, we give them a name. If a problem is MP, that means non-polyomial, that means hard. If a problem is P, that means polyomial, that means easy. Then you may wonder, what the f is this polynomial, non-polyomial thing, you learn it next year. <laughs>